don't feel safe in this bed. There are voices in my head. I've been talking to the dead and the fear baptized me. My kingdom turned to dust and I watched all my riches rust. Have I lost the mightest touch or do sad eyes blind me? Over and over we go, over the hills and the valleys below. Oh, and it follows me, follows me home, and it suffocates me. Oh, I can't breathe. I said, oh, I can't breathe. All I know is I forgot how to be me. Feel safe in these holes. There are bruises on the walls. There are bodies in the floors, and they breathe so loudly. I wish I could move, get up and walk right out this tomb. Do our saviors die too soon? For my sins surround me. Over and over we go. 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 me. we go. Over we Decision late in the night that stayed with me for all of my life. I miss you so. Hey guys, just a little moment. Let me interrupt all the sadness here. I can see now as I'm sitting here in the dark, uh, this all seems very depressing. I just wanted to let you know that I am not depressed. I just get really, really emotional when I listen to beautiful songs like this and I can connect it to my past feelings and experiences and really reflect upon it and feel it very heavily and this is not the way i feel at other times in my day when i'm not sitting here and you know doing this so just wanted to let you know that and especially if you know me 
Uh, this video can be hard to watch, you know. Just wanted to let you know that I am fine. I'm really good in my life. And I believe that all these experiences, the pain and hurt that I've had, has enriched my life in some way, shape or form. I'm not saying that is true for everyone. Um, I've had comments on that earlier from people who daily suffer from pain, either that be physical, mentally, emotionally, or all of the above. And the then to say that pain is then shaping us into diamonds, you know, it's uh, it might seem a bit unfair, and it is, because it's not the same for everyone, right? Um, if I was constantly in pain and constantly depressed, I would probably not be feeling the treasure in it, you know what I mean? So, that being said, being on the other side of all that hurt and pain, it gives me an opportunity to be very empathic gives me an opportunity to be really, really grateful for what I have now and how I am and feel inside now. It gives me the opportunity to know myself more. So yeah, if you're still watching, I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. It's going to continue uh, a bit like this and then I'll go on to tell you about my past experiences with depression, with suicide in, in their relations and uh, about my role as a mom with my depression and how that has been playing out at times. Let's continue. That song just hits me so hard and knowing that there performing the song on the bridge where his friend lost the fight, the will to live. It's, um, it's devastating, you know, and being left behind, wondering if there was something he could do to save someone. very heartbreaking of course it's uh, nobody else's responsibility nobody can have a responsibility that big and still yet as humans we can't avoid the feelings of regret for something that we couldn't really control I've been on both sides of that fence. I've never been like really suicidal, but as a kid growing up with death close in the family, my mom, she died when I was six years old. Or well, she did <laughs> die to depression. I don't want to say commit suicide because that insinuates that it's something that she was willingly and purposefully doing while she was suffering from the depression killing her and being depressed long periods all of my life. I've contemplated death a lot. And all the guilt and shame the person that did go through with such a thing was having before they died, probably. Only that intense feeling of pain could probably kill a person. The pain and heartbreak 
of knowing that you're hurting people. Some people might even think that they're not even hurting people, that they are doing the world a favor. And that is not true. When I was at my most depressed, which I, I'm not depressed now, just sad, sad, over speaking about these things. When I was really depressed, my last period, I believed that my daughter would do better without me. I was to the point where I was imagining that I needed to convince myself and the world that I was so sick that I needed to be institutionalized. <laughs> or that if I ran up to the mountains, people would just say, yeah, poor lady, she went crazy, you know? I knew that I was sick, but I couldn't see an end to it all. So I needed to find a way so that my decision of being away from them would count. Because I felt that when I was staying there, I was hurting my family more. That is really sad and painful to think about. And whatever I was feeling then, although the feelings were was very, very, very real. The reasons behind them were not true, not based on reality. My daughter actually came to me and she told me, because I'm, I'm open with her, I don't tell her all the details. Of course, she's, she's going to be seven in a month or in two months. So I'm not sharing the deepest, intricate details of my depressions with her. Um, but I'm sharing with her, I'm not going to hide so that she goes and wonders if she's doing something wrong, as I did when I was a kid, you know, <laughs> when my mom would hide in the bathroom crying, I would be on the outside begging her to let me in and, and saying I'm sorry for whatever I did to make her so sad. And I just want my daughter to be really, really clear about she cannot do anything to make me sad. I take responsibility for my feelings and the feelings of deep sadness. It's not rooted in whatever is going on right now. It's the illness. And anyway, she came to me and she said, Mom, I remember when you told me that you thought it would be better if you were gone. And she said, that's really painful to think about, because that's not true. Even when you're sad, I still want you to be here. <laughs> She's such a wise little old soul. When she was three years old, I had I break down in the living room because I was about to retract to the bathroom, but I remembered, I promised myself and my family I wouldn't hide and lock myself away and leave them outside wondering what they might have done. So in panic and despair, I just kind of collapsed on the floor um, and cried. And then my, my girl, she comes and she sits on my lap 
<laughs> and mind you, this is a girl. She's three and a half, I think. Yeah, three years and three, four months, something like this. And she sits on my lap and she studies me and I kind of try to pulling it together a little bit, looking at her. And she comes and she, she strokes my, my cheek and she says, Mom, you're not very good at loving yourself right now. <laughs> Can you? Wow, <laughs> those words. That's the essence, isn't it? I think I've spoken about this before and I've told it so many times because that is the root, isn't it, of depression. We are not loving ourselves at that moment. I just think it's great that we can be more open and vulnerable and that music like this, music uh, like Ren and Chinchilla here is performing so beautifully with so much feeling is allowing us to open up and to really feel the feels, you know. The way they're connecting, you know, when they're singing. And especially in this, in this performance, I think Ren's face looks so moved. I don't, I'm looking for a better word, but like a person in deep sorrow, loss, and it moves me a lot. I cannot for sure tell what he's feeling, but I'm reading into it. The feelings I have, the despair around people losing the fight, the will to live. My mom was not the only one, and I mean, it's sad to say, but it's not even uncommon in this world. So many of us have experienced this on close account, either someone close to us or even playing around with those thoughts ourselves. I wrote a lot of poems when I was younger to, I guess, process, process these thoughts and feelings around death and depression and also about being a little kid just wanting to play and the people in my life to be happy and alive. And I found one of these poems and it I instantly broke down because I thought it was beautifully written and I think it really highlighted the essence of the feeling that you can feel when you're left behind. I'm gonna pull it up for you. Um, Let's see. It's called Happy Again. I can read it in Norwegian. You won't understand it. But then I'll try my best to translate the, the meaning of it. Gla igen. Du nevnte aldri at du var lei. Jeg tok for gitt at du var hos meg. Levde hver dag som vi hadde tusen i vente. Å være for uten deg hadde jeg aldri i mente. Det skulle være oss to alltid. Jeg vil være hos deg nå. Jeg gjør meg sjelen min i kisten, og jeg løfter lokket på. Vi kan sammen fly ut senere, når våren kommer, min venn. Da skal vi leke sammen, vil du da bli glad igjen. Ok. So that translates roughly to the um, title, Happy Again. You never mentioned that you were you tired or tired of, like, either tired in the sense of being tired, sleepy, or tired of, sick of, you know? Because um, who I'm speaking of is my mom and she didn't talk with me about this. this. Obviously, she didn't talk about these things with me. And I was taking it for granted that you were here with me. We were living 
each day or I was living each day as there was thousands more to come and to be without you I never even thought of. It was supposed to be us two together. I want to be with you now. I hide my soul in your coffin and I put on the lid. We can fly out together later, my friend, when the spring is coming again. We can play together again and will you then be happy? That's my rough <laughs> translation of it. Yeah. When I'm watching these music videos, I'm not really anal analyzing it much. I think that there are so many great reactors out there who's really going into the depth, depth and analyzing the lyrics, the songs, the, the tone of voice, the choice of music and, and uh, melody. And I have a lot of pleasure watching these. And when I'm reacting, I feel I'm just going straight to whatever is moving around in me. And I don't even process all the details of the, the thing that hits me. It just really poof, hits me, you know what I mean? So I need a lot of time to actually watch it again and again to analyze why I'm feeling what I'm feeling and what the words mean if you dissect it into, you know, small pieces. So I think it's for now, as I'm becoming more experienced as a YouTube music, video music reactor, react, reaction person, <laughs> I can just leave that part for other people who are more experienced and more um, intelligent in that sense. So yeah well thank you for staying i appreciate it if you leave a comment and if you give this video a thumbs up if you did get some i wouldn't say pleasure but if you if if this found a way into your heart let's put it that way thank you bye